In a previous episode I demonstrated this model stamper battery that I built. And the key in here is the cams that lift the ha hammers up and it drops the hammers on the quartz crushing it to extract the gold. This episode is about the manufacture of these cams, which you can see here. That's the finished product, but we want to see how they're actually made. And we start with discs. And I've made a previous episode about how to make thin discs like this. I've also done a previous one about the technical drawing required to design the cam itself. So now we're finally down to actual construction of the cams. Here you can see the offsets that I put on the front of the chuck to mount these thin discs on. It really makes cutting thin discs very simple. Now I thought about this for a year before I actually sat down to actually do it and what I decided to do was to use the quick change tool post boring bar holder which has a hole board right through the middle of it and place a shaft in that hole it would be allowed to turn and on one end of the shaft I had the pattern and in the tailstock I had a peg of brass which acted as the uh, follower and followed that cam as I turned it around on the other end of the shaft I had the brass disc that I had made and in the chuck I had a milling tool, an end mill, that would cut the shape. So as I gradually cut into the brass I would rotate the shaft with a lever in a hole in the end of the uh, shaft but I found that I could just allow it to follow the cam just apply enough pressure with the rod to, to allow it to rotate or to encourage it to rotate as it's cutting. And that worked reasonably well. After I made the first cam I discovered it was the wrong shape really and I decided to redesign it and start again. And once I'd made one of those then I used it as the pattern rather than the aluminium one which was I found it being too slimsy and if I put too much pressure on it it actually buckled. So I went to using the first cam and the set to make the rest of them. Before we get to the end of this video I'll show you actual video footage of how it actually worked. But first I've got some footage that was actually recorded at the time I did the project so let's look at that. You can see here the first cam that I made and the pattern that was used to make it in the background. I apologize for the flickering fluorescent lights you see here. This uh, boring tool adapter is actually the key to the whole process. Uh, this fits in a tool post and um, at this end I place the pattern, it's the old pattern. Here's a new pattern, I've got to drill a hole in there to mount it. 8mm bolt holding it on. I've got these little holes in there so that while it's cutting I can rotate the, both the pattern and the work around inside this uh, boring bar holder. So this has just got a hole through the middle for a boring bar and uh, I'm using that as a means of holding both the work and the pattern. So this end, take the nut off and um, place the blank discs that I've prepared. It's keyway by the way and there's a keyway on here too. I've cut the same way and uh, so it goes on here with a key and a nut on it, hold it tight. And this one doesn't actually have a key and I'm wondering whether I may have to do something to lock it into position but the uh, pattern goes on this end and you'll see in a minute how it's set up on the lathe like so Oops. and I'll, I'll be using the, a, a piece of metal in the tailstock to trace around the surface of the pattern as I rotate it around so I keep the, this actually allows me to move it in and out I thought I'd actually take the lead screw out of the cross slide but I found that I leave the lead screw in I can just um, turn the handle on the lead screw and push the um, follower against the pattern and just gradually rotate it around and push it in as it's cutting and there's a um, milling tool in the chuck which actually cuts the shape out of the disc as I rotate it and move it in and out so you'll see how that's working in a minute this is a, a sample I made first this is a bit too uh, steep a curve on it now the, these planks go on the other end of that shaft on the um, boring tool holder and uh, there's a keyway on there and this um, cam goes on that keyway. I made this pattern out of a thin piece of aluminum and um, I was successful in using that to make the first cam. Then I realized that the 
Cams have to be mounted on a single shaft in five different positions so they don't all operate simultaneously. And uh, so I made these uh, notches for five notches and put a pin in the shaft so that, to align with those notches so that I could put it in five different positions. But the first time I use it, you can see that it just tore away um, a piece of material between these two notches. So it's just not strong enough to handle it. So I went back to the drawing board, got the one uh, cam that I had made and uh, put five slots in it. And to do that, I used the dividing head that I'd made and cut five um, keyways uh, inside this cam. And I've got it here, we can have a look at it. I've now mounted it on the end of my shaft and we'll use that as a pattern for making the remaining, the remaining um, cams. So I've got five positions I can mount it in to make the five different cams. Well, I hope you can see now how I've got this set up with the um, end mill six millimeter in the in the chuck and at the opposite end I should have a six millimeter brass shaft in the drill chuck on the back. I've got a far shaft that fits neatly into there and on the end of the shaft I've got mounted the pattern and on the other end I've got a blank disc of brass and I've got a little um, piece of a, a two litre coke bottle over here to collect the dust off it because I think when we're milling this brass, it's going to churn out huge quantities of uh, very, very fine shavings, which are almost like dust, and, and uh, it's not very good stuff to breathe and get in your eyes and things. So we'll try and we'll see how this works with this little sleeve over the top. So we've got a little bit of um, aluminium leftover scrap holding the Coke bottle in place, and inside there, you can see the brass disc that I'm going to be cutting. That reminds me to put my earmuffs on. My close-up glasses for eye protection, uh, and it's even a surgeon's mask. And I see if it makes a lot of, it doesn't make as much dust as I'm expecting. Then I can get rid of that. So we'll move the cross line back until we can get the follower into the into the base of the S shape. This is where I want to drill the hole. And when I need to rotate the pattern, I'm going to be using this bar in here. Okay, so I'm ready to actually start to drill a hole straight in. Yeah, maybe the towel's stuck up. Okay, and I've got it set on the second highest speed, which would be position number four, 900 RPM. And I'm using a six millimeter end mill. Yeah, that bar's not strong enough to handle what I was doing to it. I wouldn't have thought I'd put that much stress on it. Let's see, oh, we've made uh, a slot about uh, 15 millimeters long almost. So, yeah, the cutter seems to be working out all right. Now I've got this uh, whole thing assembled here with the blank disc on one end and the cam on the other and we just flip it on to the tool post like so and I've got the, the follower here and the tailstock and the tool and the chuck so I'm just about ready to go.
onto the second uh, arm of the cam now and we'll be going that way. rough. I think with a bit of practice I could probably get it better. So you can see how that's rotating around and I've got the pattern on the opposite end following the follower. So we'll put it back in there, put the tool, the cutting tool back in its slot. Needs to be doing a fairly good job I think. So, actually next we have to start a new hole, directly opposite the last one, and start again for the second arm of the envelope curve, because it's actually got two arms on it. What you've been watching is the very first attempt, and uh, it's useful because you can see some of the problems that arise. I was surprised at how much force is actually applied to the aluminium pattern I was using, and also to the uh, pin and the tailstock, the follower. Um, and so all of this has to be really strong and rigid and it worked a lot better once I used the first um, cam as a, as a pattern. It probably wouldn't have been such a problem if I had been cutting shallower cuts instead of trying to go through the full thickness of the 5mm plate and just take several passes you have to make sure that you cover the same path each time. But I had several problems with um, the pattern getting damaged or coming loose uh, and the uh, follower in the tailstock moving and various other things. However the end result was very satisfying. The stamper as a final product actually worked very well and uh, we'll come back to that because we have to make the keyways for these uh, stamper cams. Well since you got this far don't forget to click the like button and the subscribe button and the bell to be reminded and uh, perhaps even consider going and using Patreon.